This is the only lure you are going to need to catch shad. Well, welcome everybody. I am patiently waiting to fully welcome spring. Right when you think you're about to get some warm weather, which will produce warmer water, Mother Nature turns it around, drops it back down into the 40s. <sighs> Now this video today is again about shad fishing. First shad video for my channel this year of 2020. In the spring here in Richmond, shad fishing is, uh, I mean I love plugging for striper and all that, but shad fishing has to be, ah, uh, it's up there. It's one of, one of my favorite things to do in the spring here. They hit hard, Ow. they fight really strong for the size of the fish that they are. I mean, they can get pretty big. Trust me, they can get pretty big. But really, what makes shad fishing the most enjoyable for at least me is just seeing them go out of the water. Ah, oh, they they love to jump. A lot of people they say they're the poor man's tarpon. They fight like tarpon. I've never caught a tarpon. So I really, I mean, I just personally, I think a tarpon might fight a little bit harder. But you know, I've never caught one, so I can't really compare. Anyway, although previous, although. Uh, although previously in my channel I've shown a lot of how-to videos with shad from making the lures not making lures making the rigs to how to fish for them I wanted to make another video to show the simplest and the most easiest rig that will make you productive for this fishery those other videos they're linked below oh see I tell you I th I, it's warm one day next day I'm out here in two layers sweatpants now my nose is running can't catch a break make up your mind mother nature now the other rig that i showed previously was the two-piece rig which involved a spoon and a dart this we're going to simplify reason being i actually i met a few of y'all down at the james river here in richmond and it was really nice meeting y'all i'm glad that y'all you know watched the video and a lot of y'all found success with the two-piece but there were a few of you that had stressed to me that it, you weren't really understanding it how to tie it how to make it but that's that's why i'm making this one. trying to make it simple as possible for you i mean everybody fishes at different levels everybody has different skill levels everybody has different time they've spent fishing so i just feel like this is going to make it easy right now the water temperatures in the james river here in richmond are about 45 so that's a little bit cold for the shad to really have showed up yet so that's why i wanted to go ahead and make this video and push it out now right here these are the two most prominently used lures here in richmond that people most commonly use to catch shad this is just the dart various sizes weights obviously in colors and this is just the spoon um i mean i just refer to them as a shad spoon but really they're just a spoon they catch multiple species but i refer to them as a shad spoon all right so just so y'all know what the shad spoons look like in their packaging so that way you really know what to look for when you're in those tackle shops this is kind of the packaging that's most commonly found in my area <coughs> most commonly found in my area and i think i'm getting a cold again different sizes different colors in its packaging and those the same people that make the spoons make the darts but we're not we're not messing with those today now the color and the size of your spoon that you choose it really varies depending on the water conditions and really the class of fish that you're going for now don't get me wrong i've had like smaller shad hit a four inch fluke or paddle tail before that being said you want to have the highest chance of getting that hook in the fish's mouth what i really mean by that is i've used the larger spoons that really we use mostly for the american shad but i've used the larger spoons and they get hit like a bunch but the thing is is the hook on them is just too big for them to really get inside of their mouth although yes i mean bigger stuff works and you know if you catch a fish generally they will be a bigger fish because it is a bigger mouth for them to get that hook into but in general to get on these fish i'd never really use the biggest lure possible for these shad but if i had to choose one color and one size i would go with the small gold one now typically the spoons that i find they're coming about three sizes i mean i just call it small medium and large but i always go with the small when i'm starting off the spring run because i just want to be on fish i'm not being too picky on the size i just want to catch fish i mean i could talk all day about the conditions and how to choose your color but gold make it plain and simple gold and the reason gold is because it is produced in all conditions so just make it plain and simple and stick with gold if you're just starting off all right so you have your spoons we said today we're not messing with these guys we're not messing with the shed go go get anyway we're not messing with that guy we're messing with this the darts only the darts i definitely said darts didn't i 
I meant spoons. I meant spoons. So right off the bat, got your spoon. And what do you notice? It's very light. So in order to be able to cast this out, you're gonna need some sort of weight. This being a light lure, spoon, whatever, gives it its action when being pulled through the water column. You know, it's, it's just made to just flutter around, flash around, fire up these fish. So we need weight. We need weight, fling that puppy out there. Oh, is my nose running? Oh, continuing on. So these are typically the weights that I use. This right here is a three fourths of an ounce, but this is a trolling weight, an inline weight. I don't know what you call it, but this is it. Pretty much it's the weight with a swivel on the top and a swivel on the bottom. Now, yes, it is very important to pick the proper weight. So obviously many different sizes of weights. Now keep in mind, this isn't really like a video for setting up the rig to catch fish off of say a pier like if say you're working off a john boat or something like that or from the bank this is going to be perfect for you oh it's getting cold now fishing from like i said the boat somewhere low closer to the water or the level of the water from the bank i use typically anywhere up to an ounce now it's very, very ugh, shit now it's very important that when you do go fishing, don't just bring one size of weight. Try to bring a various weight selection so you can switch it up. As long as your retrieve is staying consistent, heavier weight means you're going to be fishing deeper. Yes, they may seem obvious to a lot of people, but trust me, some people don't understand that yet. Just to make it simpler, which this video is all about doing is I typically am using a fourth or a quarter of an ounce or less when I'm fishing five feet of water or less. That being said, on the other scope of things, when I'm fishing water that's about 10 feet or more, I mean, I can go up to an ounce. There's been plenty of times where three quarter ounce is just not getting down to where the fish are at. I'm in 10 feet of water. I have to bump it up to an ounce and that just brings that lure down that much more to where the fish are at. Again, you have to locate the fish. Bring those weights so you can change it up. So don't get me wrong. There's been times where I've been out there fishing. People are catching to the left, the right of me, and I'm, I'm struggling. But what I've noticed, it is more important to change up your weight than it is to change up the color of that spoon, that dart, whatever. Wait, no dart. We're not talking about darts. But it's more important to change up the weight because because it's, again, it's, I can't stress how important it is. You're not going to be able to fish for them if the lure isn't in the depth of where the fish are at. I mean, again, take notes. Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not cheating. If you're just observing the people around you, what they're using. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people, you ask them what they're using. They're not going to tell you that some people are just built that way. This video, we're looking for simplicity. So what I'm going to explain the retrieve rate for when you're fishing for these, it's just slow and steady. And these spoons, I mean, they're going to do all the work for you. Have a slow and steady retrieve. These are going to flutter through the water and it's just going to fire up those fish and trigger that bite. Now reels, retrieve line at different rates. A good rule of thumb is you don't want to be retrieving it at a rate to where the lure is splashing on top of the water or even breaking the surface. And the other scope of things, you don't want it dragging or hitting the bottom. Kind of sum it all up. I mean, I'm just going to stress it one more time that it's really, it's, it's the simplest way to do it because you're not creating any action to it other than just a straight, slow, steady retrieve. And you're just letting that spoon just flutter around. <coughs> God. <coughs> oh, coronavirus. You're letting the lure do all the work for you. Adjust the weight. Adjust the weight, adjust the weight, adjust the weight. All right, hopefully y'all can see this. This is the weight, and really this is where your main line's coming to the weight. And then from the weight, you're on your line. Don't use high vis. I'm using it just so y'all can see it. Down the line to your spoon. That is it. Now from the weight to the spoon, here, let me just, from the weight to the spoon, I typically use anywhere from eight to 10 pound fluoro or mono. Just use clear line, use clear, don't, yeah, again, don't use this. You're not limited to use eight to 10. It's just, that's what I find helps this have its action. Cause I mean, you gotta imagine if you're using 20 pound line or something on here between the weight and the spoon, the line's heavy. It's, it's getting, creating friction throughout the water. So it's kind of, it's not killing the action of it, but it's hurting it. The distance between the weight and the spoon, I mean, there's no real right or wrong answer. I just would never go any less than about a foot and a half. What do I find myself throwing most? Probably, probably foot and a half to two feet. That's the general length I will use from the weight to the spoon. Okay, so real quick, let me just show you all what a clinch knot is, the knot that I use from the main line to the weight and from the weight to the spoon. All together, it's three knots. Three knots, but all the same knot. Does that make sense? All the same knot, a clinch knot, three times. Okay, so all it is, like, just imagine that this is your weight or your spoon. Put it through the eye. Come back around, just like that. Then all you're going to do is you're going to take this end right here, and you're going to wrap it. One, two, three, 
four. I mean, four to five times is fine. Take that same tag end you see down here where you have that hole. You put this through the hole and then you just pull it tight. And that's it. Hopefully you could hear it around the grill shaking and now I gotta, damn it, I didn't bring scissors. I gotta get this off of the grill. Yeah. Well, that, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to make that video. Like I said, there was, there's a good, there's a couple of y'all that, you know, were just asking about easier ways to fish for them because the two piece video was a little, a little bit much for you, I guess. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and push this video out because those people that did approach me at the river when I met them, this is the exact rig that I simplified and let them fish with and they had much more success. And if, if any of y'all are watching this video, go ahead and write a comment down below. Again, it was nice meeting y'all and I appreciate the, <coughs> and I appreciate the support. But again, check out the other videos. I mean, I personally, I do fish the two piece more than I fish this one, but they both work great. The link for that video, I will, again, I'll put it in the description below. I don't know, this weather's weird, but I will be having some more fishing videos out soon. If you're newer to the channel, check out some of the other shad videos from last year. Please do consider subscribing. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Like the video. Hopefully I don't have a cold so hopefully it's not going to take a take a toll on me fishing wise because i want to be out there and be able to fish when these fish show up but anyway guys thanks for watching i'll catch y'all next time hopefully out on the river like i said peace